Well, hi guys and gals, it's me, George, the Shade Tree Fix-It Man. And I thought I might bring you down here to the shop and give you a little update on what's going on and what's not going on. So hold on to your hats, because here we go. Well, I've had this apart several different times, and I have been looking around for... Um, the proper points and condenser for this and uh, I actually bought a set the other day but they turned out to be the wrong ones and I did finally locate one set that looks like it is the same as this on eBay uh, only one in all the places I've looked and I looked on way beyond eBay but uh, I have to discover what the model number is of the coil before I can determine even if that one is right. And that one is like, uh, ah, it's 25 bucks plus shipping. And I'm thinking that I'm going to try an alternative. I'm going to make the assumption that my coil is good and... I'm going to replace the points and condenser unit with an electronic ignition unit which is less than $12 and then I won't have the problem of the uh, points and condenser now the problem that I have I see also that there the plate here that adjusts the spacing for the coil to the inside of the flywheel I can see that it has been moved so I have no way of knowing if the gap is right here you know and I'm not exactly sure how to go about setting that gap because you can't uh, you can't look at it through the flywheel because as you can see there's no holes in the flywheel anywhere to have access down in there and if I were to put this on here, obviously I can't get underneath and there is no access point underneath. There's no holes in this backing plate and that's where it would have to be. So I think, like I said, I'm going to go with the assumption that my coil is good. It certainly looks good. There's no indications that it was burnt at all. The wiring all is perfectly intact on it. And uh, so I think I'm going to buy that uh, electronic ignition module. And all it does is it has two wires on it. One of them will hook to this wire here. I will take the points and condenser unit right off and that unit is very small and I'll just attach it in here and the second wire just goes to a ground so um, I won't be able to get that till uh, next week probably the end of next week um, when my eBay sales finish off um, I don't have any extra funds at the moment. So that's where I'm at on that. And I think what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to start cleaning up the other parts and get it ready so that when I get those ignition parts, we can put it together and hopefully f uh, fire it off. So in essence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up restoring this before uh, I have it running. And uh, that's okay. And even if I could never get it running, and, and I am fully convinced that I will be able to get it running, even if I couldn't get it running, it would still make a neat looking display. And I even thought about the possibility of maybe using this on my one of my next builds, which is a motorized uh, bicycle. Uh, probably to make it look something like a 
an old board track racer or something like that. I know lots of people have done it, but there's always a different way of doing it. And you know me, I'm big into doing things a little bit differently. So that's where we're at there. Um, I'm also looking around for another air filter unit because, uh, and I haven't found one of those online, but the problem with the one that we have is the body of it here was all made out of plastic of some sort and as you can see it's broken and it was that way when I got it. The uh, filter unit itself appears to be fine, you know. So uh, I suppose if I really wanted to use it I could turn it around so you didn't see the broken part and make a air filter to go inside of there. But uh, and I have another partial piece but that's missing the outside part here it would this would essentially be the same kind of a thing that would go onto a piece like that and evidently um, that's one of the things that got left behind in Minnesota I keep finding things that I thought I had that are left behind and one other issue we're going to have is with our gas tank and I know a couple people said I really should try and restore this one so it would look original. But this thing is in really, really bad shape. And it has all of this... I'm assuming it's... I'm assuming it's solder. And it was done really poorly. And I noticed that there are, are more cracks now. Um, so... I'm not sure if it's really worth fixing. I haven't looked for another gas tank, but I had another idea of what we could use for a gas tank. And that will remain to be seen. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Not a lot going on out here in the shop. And, uh, but I thought I'd just bring you up to date with what we do have. So thanks for watching, commenting, and for subscribing to this big nothing. Maybe this is a video worse than the video that I made that was worse than the one that uh, my good friend Missouri Old Timer made. And speaking of old timers, I just wanted to mention as I close... Um, one of my good friends and a fellow that contributed to the Goofy Cart build, which hopefully we'll be getting back onto real soon here, Chuck, uh, known as Old Brat Rider, has passed away. Sorely missed by this old man, I can tell you. And unfortunately, death is a part of life. But for me, I don't believe it's the end of our life. What we need to be prepared for is what God has for us in the next life. There is a heaven to be gained and a hell to be shunned. And there is only one way to make sure that heaven is your final destiny. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I encourage you, if you have not done so, to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Give him your life, and he'll give you his life. Thanks for watching commenting, and for subscribing. Bye now.